you're the king of my life. You're the king of my life. You're the king of my life. Now, saints, we're dealing with prosperity angels and money angels on here. Now, prosperity angels, they have a ministry to bring you into good success with the word. They want you to have everything that was promised in the covenant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They want you to live it out in full totality and in power, not in weakness. Prosperity angels are really hungry to perform their abilities in one's life. Money angels. Haggai chapter two, verse eight. The Lord said the silver and the gold is mine. Money is mine. And when he says that money is mine, he also created money angels to fulfill this part of his kingdom. In Ecclesiastes, it said money is a defense and money answers all things. So these money angels, they have a part in the answering of all things in a person's life. Money angels carry power in the money arena of your life. So when you are in obedience to God, they back you, they work for you, they minister for you, they make ways and they cause paths that have money on it to get to you. They are a part of navigating people in your direction. Let's go to Genesis chapter 24. We're dealing with these prosperity angels, these money angels. Let's deal with this because they are going to do something mighty in your life this week, today, right now. If you're on this line, write me. This is my time for money angels to minister for me. This is my time for money angels to minister for me. This is my time for prosperity angels to do the supernatural for me. Now, saints, before I read Genesis 24, verse 40, remember in Hebrews chapter uh, one, it says, are they not ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those that are the heirs of salvation. You notice it's talking about uh, ministering spirits. Now, when Jesus died on the cross, there was another agenda, another batch of ministering spirits, invisible men that are to serve you, to nurse you, to nurture you in accomplishing your inheritance. That's what they endeavor to do. So during that time, they want to give you an encounter with Jehovah Jireh's provisional plan. They want to supply everything to you. Now health is in there. Deliverance is in there. Uh, Protection is in there, but money is in there. Wealth is in there. Finances is in there. Now let's go to Genesis chapter 24. Let's go here. Let's look at what it say here. Okay, let's go to Genesis 24 verse 40. Abraham, Abraham is sending a man to uh, uh, one of his servants to go get a wife for his son. That's right. This is my time for money angels. Huh? This is my time for money angels to minister for me. Now saints, um, let me say this, uh, ministering to and ministering for are two different, uh, it's two different mannerisms. If you minister for, because the Lord said there, a minister and angel sent forth to minister for those that are as a salvation. That means that 
you have a part to play in doing something, but then there's another part that don't need you because you already did your part. So when it said that the ministering uh, spirits, they are sent forth to minister for, that means that after you obey God in his kingdom, you follow his laws, that the supernatural is governing as a response to you responding to God. Now the super, now these invisible men are doing their job. These invisible men, saints, ministering spirits, angels are invisible men and a woman. I don't want to stay too long on this, but when God created the angelic, he made male and female. And there, there was a reason why he made male and female because he liked variety. And then for some of you all that don't understand this, uh, the female angels had a part to play. There's angelic families, there's families of angels, and God intended for everything that he created to reproduce, including the angels. That's shocking to some of you, all right? But I talked about it before, how the angels in Genesis had sperm in their body. It said that the angels came down into the daughters of men, made them their wives. So they had sperm in their body. Angels have sperm. God created everything he created to reproduce. That's why you see two lions. Two lions can reproduce. Birds, they reproduce. Even ants, ants reproduce. Donkeys reproduce. Dolphins reproduce. Squirrels reproduce. Everything is reproducing, including the angels. So there are invisible men and women in the spirit realm that work for you. Saints, don't think for one minute the Queen of Sheba had all male angels. She had female angels too. Because some of you are on here, you probably be like, Prophet, come on now. Are you serious? What is a female angel? What are they going to do? Teach you how to put on some makeup? Shit. <laughs> some of y'all want to look like squirrels and SpongeBob sisters all the time. They'll teach you how to put on some makeup and fix up yourself. And some of you older women on here, you, you think that you done live long enough, ain't nothing supernatural gonna happen to you. If you look right, maybe something supernatural will happen to you. But you won't go outside with a do-rag on. With, with, with. You won't go outside with, with, with do-rag and bald spots. You won't take your dentures out and all of that. Holy Ghost might be sending somebody your way and when they see you, they... You know how many times people would be sent of the Lord to come help you and then when they look at you, they're like, nah, this ain't what God sent. I'm going to keep on waiting. I ain't hear God today. God ain't tell me this. God told me, he said, nah, just, I'm supposed to get a million to somebody else. They don't look like this. Let's go to uh, Genesis chapter 24, verse 40. It said, and he said unto me, The Lord before whom I walk, this is Abraham talking to his servant. The Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with thee and prosper thy way. The Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with thee and will prosper thy way. Look what it's saying here. The angel going to prosper my way. The angel going to prosper my way. The angel is going to prosper my way. Look at what it's talking about here, people of God. It's talking about the angel prospering the way of his servant. A prosperity angel. That's its whole mission, to prosper the way of the servant. That means that every plan and purpose of God that's supposed to happen, every connection, every relationship is going to happen with this angel right here. See, prosperity angels, they are invisible and they work alongside of you so that the plan of God don't be aborted. 
If you take a note, write that down. Prosperity angels prevent God's will from being aborted. Wow. Wow, that's a whole picture, right? That's a picture. That's a whole imagery right there. Prosperity angels, they hate the forfeiting of divine favor. <sighs> that means that you don't correspond with the divine favor correctly. Like it don't, it don't happen because something is in the way, whether it be you or whether you allowing someone else to get in the way. You know, that happens a lot of times with people. You let somebody come into your life, distract you. And now the prosperity angels can't do their ministry because that person is in cahoots and covenant with the gates of hell. And while you connected to them, the more you intertwine with them, you are intertwining with their world and their system and how they operate from the spirit realm. That could hinder you. If you notice, why else would Jesus pit everybody out the house when he about to release a miracle from the heavens, from the glory of God? Because they were in covenant with sickness. They were in covenant with death. So God on purpose removed them because he didn't want their world intermingle with what he was doing. Saints, let me say this to you right here. In Genesis chapter 24, verse 40, Abraham is saying that he has authority over money angels, prosperity angels. My question to you is why does Abraham have such authority to decide the activity of prosperity angels? What is he doing in his life? Saints is very clear that Abraham is a master sower. He's a phenomenal sower. He is an honorable vessel of God. He's always sowing. All right. He's always sowing. Now, I want to show you how uh, Abraham sowing activated angels. In Genesis chapter 23, if you're on this line, write me. My sowing is activating angels that guide me to wealth. My sowing is activating angels that guide me to riches. Now, Revelation chapter five, verse 12, Jesus received blessing, riches. And so riches is what Jesus received. That's in uh, Revelation chapter five, verse 12. So riches is a department of God's kingdom where he ministers money, silver and gold, financial authority, economic, economic superiority, Economic victory, provisional authority. Why would the father minister riches to Jesus? Because Jesus is going to minister riches to his wife, which is the church. You don't understand this. Uh, uh, Jesus is the way to abundant life. He said, I come to give you life and life more abundantly. The father ministered the riches anointed to Jesus and now Jesus ministered the riches anointed to you. Now, once you get the revelation that you Jesus is wife, because that's what the church is. So when we deal with the riches anointing, you are now Jesus's wife. So Jesus won't take care of his wife lavishly. Now, watch this. If you a man on this line, I'm talking to you, too. You Jesus's wife, according to spiritual status. So he deals with you the same way a husband deals with his wife. A husband wants his wife's well-being to be legitimately well, awesome, superior, luxurious, enjoyable, pleasurable. 
So the Lord wants to give you a luxurious result as his wife, as his church. See, these are benefits of being the church of Jesus Christ. You are his wife when you receive the Holy Spirit and he want to make sure that his wife is well taken care of. He don't want his wife poor. He don't want his wife having issues financially, losing battles in her provision. He don't want his wife having no uh, debts destroying her life. He don't want his wife losing battles to the thief. Now watch this. What man will see his wife getting beat up and let his wife get beat up? A husband will come and fight for his wife. It don't matter if he outnumber, he'll fight. Think about this. When you're the church of Jesus Christ and the thief is beating up on your life, stealing, killing, and destroying, do you think that your husband is at peace? Oh, this is good. This uh, is a whole picture. This is a whole imagery right here. If ha, When have you seen a man watching his woman get beat up and he don't want to step in and, and fight for his wife or get revenge for his wife? Well, think about it. King Jesus been trying to make the church rich for ages because King Jesus don't like seeing the church get beat up by the enemy. While the enemy beating up on the church, King Jesus got to watch the abuse and see the thief is knocking them out in the finances. Now, since the world not supposed to be superior to you financially, the Holy Ghost is the richest man on earth. The Holy Ghost is the richest man on earth right now. If you want to know who has the most money on the earth, it's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is the most wealthiest man that's moving in the earth realm right now. If you want to know who has the highest level of finances, it's the Holy Ghost. So when the Holy Ghost come into your life, everything that he teaching you is because he want to entrust to you his financial ability. Somebody write me on here. I received the financial ability of the Holy Ghost. I received the financial ability of the Holy Ghost. Now, watch this. We in Genesis chapter uh, 22. I'm going to show you how Abraham's uh, sowing activated angels. Th therefore, you're sowing in the blessing of Abraham, the blessing of Abraham on you. It activates angels when you sow. Your life is built to move off of your sowing. That's why people that don't sow, their life don't move. Because angels are attracted to seed sowing. Let's go here. I'm going to show you how angels are attracted to your sowing. They are activated by your sowing. Abraham rose up early in the morning and he saddled his ass. It sounded real great. And took two, <laughs> took two, <laughs> took two of his young men with him. <laughs> and Isaac, his son, huh? <laughs> and claimed the wood for the burnt offerings <laughs> and rose up <laughs> and went unto the place of which God told him. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Look what it said right here. It said Abraham went to the place that God told him, but look what he did. He took wood for the burnt offering. If you look at what Abraham doing, he carries a sowing atmosphere. He's always ready to sow. Now watch this. He took the wood for the burnt offering and rose up. Now, saints, what I want you to catch is he rose up. Now, he's going up. He's up. 
He's up in his attitude. He's up in his dedication. He's up in his diligence. That's cheerful giving. The Bible said God loveth the cheerful giver. Now it says that Abraham, he had the burnt offering ready, the atmosphere for it. Now I want you to catch this. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Now this is prophetic. It said uh, on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes. Now, I want you to catch this. Remember, Jesus died after three days. I mean, Jesus died and rose again after three days, rather. Look, after uh, on the third day, look at how Abraham lifted up his eyes. Now, watch this here. And he saw the place. Now, saints, I want to dig deep in here because remember, Jesus was also a seed being sown and that third day, the seed rose up. Now watch this here. On the third day, Abraham is seeing the place where the seed is being sown. Uh, that sounds the same way like Jesus. Now, now we know that he literally saw the place, but I'm dealing with this also in spiritual revelation. Look at how Abraham, his eyes opened up after three days. S 72 hours had to go past. Now he sees the place. So this is a three-day journey. Now, if we look at how the father sowed his seed, it was a three-day journey. On the third day, Jesus rides. After three days. Now, look at Abraham. He's, after three days, the third day, he sees the place where the seed is being sown. Now, watch this. Go, seed going to be sown. Look at verse five. And Abraham said unto his young men, abide ye here with the ass. That sound real? Uh, never mind. And I and the lad will go yonder and worship. Uh-oh, uh-oh, wait, 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 wait. Saints, I want you to catch this. Look what the Bible just said. Abraham said, we going to go so, but he said, let us go and worship. So Abraham identified sowing and offering up what he had to God as worship. So saints, many people, they live a life of worship that's self-made because Abraham worshiped by offering up what he had. Abraham worshiped by sowing. Abraham worshiped by giving cheerfully. Look what he did right here. He said, abide right here with the ass. There's several people would have said yes immediately when he said that. There wouldn't been no fight. That wasn't a hard instruction. And I <laughs> and the lad will go yonder and worship. <laughs> Many people went. See, certain people, they, they don't fight certain instructions because they, they got, you know, they got some joy to it. Look what it said right here. And I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again unto you. Now watch this. Look at how Abraham, he stamped his sowing as going yonder and worshiping. So saints, when we deal with worship, worship is cheerful sowing into God's presence and his word. If you're taking notes, write that down. Worship is cheerful sowing into God's presence and his word. Abraham likened his offering, his seed, his sowing, his giving unto God as an act of worship. So saints, I'm showing you how to activate angels in your life through worship, activating angels in your life through this Abrahamic anointing. Look what goes on next. It said, Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son, and took the fire in his hand. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, my father. He said, here I am, my son. And he said, behold, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Now look at verse eight. Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Watch this. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there. See? 
we dealt with Abraham sowing in Genesis 12, verse 7 and 8. Now we're dealing with him sowing in Genesis 23, verse 9. Would you say that Abraham is a master sower? Look at his life. We watching him from chapter to chapter. All throughout Genesis, it's saying that Abraham is building an altar and sowing. Could this be the reason why a lot of people got a lot of promises, but no possession of the promises? Are you living a life of sowing? We're not talking about every once in a while. We're not talking about every month, every now and again in a month. We're not talking about every now and again, every three months. Abraham is living a life of sowing all the time. Watch this here. Abraham built an altar. Now, saints, I, I want you to catch this. People in the Old Testament will build an altar, literally. That means that they use nails, pop, 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 and they'll create an altar in which they'll put their seed on it. Now, what do we do in the New Covenant? We build altars by building up our sowing account. So you build an altar by consecutively giving, consecutively sowing, committing your life to the sowing anointing. So you build an altar today when you have a reputation of giving to God all the time. That's how you build your altar today through lifestyle generosity to the presence and word of God. Watch, he came to the place which God had told him of. So when, when he gets to the place where God has assigned him, see, some of y'all got to recognize this. When you get to the place that God assigned you, why haven't you built the altar of sowing into that place? Did you know that your man of God is a place? Your man of God is a place. When God gives you a man of God, that's a place. Your man of God is a geography. Your man of God is a place. When you get to the place that God has assigned you to, that man of God, why don't you build an altar and start sowing into that man of God? That is a place. Watch this. So Abraham, in verse 9, he laid the wood in order and bound his seed, Isaac, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. So Abraham is taking his best seed, his best seed that came from him, and he's sowing it on the altar. Watch this. Abraham stretched forth his hand and took his knife to slay his seed. His son. See, every soul must catch this. You have an anointing to slay money. You, you have an anointing to slay money. If we look at this text, Abraham had full motive, full momentum, and full intention to slay his seed, to slay his son. This is what you do when you are sower. You slay money. Money dies, but it resurrects. The resurrection power of God is the harvest. Because this is what God did with his son, Jesus. He slayed him. He resurrected in 72 hours as the harvest. And now through the son, let's go to Romans 8, 32. All right, we know that he's the son, right? All right, so let's look at what God's best seed has done. Now he came back as a harvest. Now let's go to Romans chapter eight, verse 32. Let's look what it say. It said, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. 
how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Romans chapter 8 verse 32 says that he spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Watch. So the father offered up his best seed. And now through his best seed, it is a portal for you to receive everything that you want. So that show you the power of the seed sown. When you sow in seed, you're giving God your best. You enter into the world, the storehouse of heaven, where everything that you want to happen in your life on earth can access you, can come to you. Saints, this don't come through no praying. This don't come through no prayer. This come through building an altar, a sowing. The father didn't even pray for man to come out their sin. The father sowed his best seed. My God. I'm thinking about this right now. Why did the father say, oh, I pray that everybody will be delivered. Let there be deliverance. Whoosh. That whoosh really bring deliverance, but <laughs> not talk. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> I won't get back to what I'm saying. Let there be deliverance. Why didn't he say that? But what the father went, they went over some of y'all. What the father did was, I'ma sow my best seed to get the deliverance into your accessibility, to get the inheritance into your accessibility. You notice. The father used sowing, not prayer, to penetrate humanity. Now, let's, let's read this one more time. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him. See, how many of you are, are sparing your seed? You spare your seed when you save it. You spare your seed when you spend it where you want to spend it. You spare your seed when you have fear, when you're trying to uh, uh, save your life and, and make your own security with that money. It said that he spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Now watch this. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Now watch this here. God gives you things as harvests. So let me ask you something. How could God give you harvests if you don't respect his law of the seed. Now, let's go here. Okay, some, some of y'all might say, well, prophet, I ain't got to sow no seed because we only need a new covenant and I need the new covenant. Those things don't apply no more. We in the new covenant. It unchanged up. Okay, now let's go to uh, Genesis chapter eight, verse 22. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, Cold and heat, summer and winter. Now, let me tell you something, saints, it's hot as hell. How, how many of y'all know it's hot as hell where you is? It's hot as hell. It's so hot, your weave will stick to your forehead and take pliers and twizzlers to take it out. It just gets stuck right there. It's so hot, boy, no matter if you got shorts on, your shorts need to be shorter. Your, your, muscle, your muscle shirt needs some more. It, it needs some more leverage. It, everything just hot, boy. If you get a hot chocolate, if you get a Kit Kat, you put it in your car, it's going to melt in two minutes when you come out. It's real hot right now. If you look at what the text say, cold and heat. Look what it says, as long as the earth remains. Now, let me ask you something. Is there cold and heat? It's hot as hell right now. How many of y'all know it's hot as hell? Since you wake up... It don't matter if you got the air conditioner on, it's still hot. You can feel the air coming, but you can feel hot. So the fact that we could identify that heat still exists as the earth remaineth. 
The fact that we can identify that heat and cold is still in existence effectively, you know that the seed works. I'm going to tell you something. God was such a genius to say as uh, 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 cold and heat because God wanted people to be able to identify that the fact that these things are still occurring, it shows you the effectiveness of the seed. So every time it's hot outside, I have a revelation. My seed has a harvest coming in my direction. Every time, since one time I was sowing a seed for a car and I sowed the seed and the car came to me. One time I was sowing a seed for a debt to be canceled and I sowed the seed and the debt got canceled more than one. One time I sowed a seed to get favor and I got the favor. The favor came right through the seed. I connected with the individual, a business, a business a relationship. Then one time I was sowing a seed for, for Dr. Mike Murdoch. And guess what? I got Dr. Mike Murdoch. I named the seed. Doc Saints, that's dangerous. I I'm going to tell you like this here, it's dangerous. I'm going to tell you right here, it's, it's dangerous. Because Saints, I named my seed for Dr. Mike Murdoch and, and I, I got connected to Dr. Mike Murdoch and Dr. Mike Murdoch, um, I'm, I'm, I'm in submission to him, but, but, but he my best friend. <laughs> Me and him have a lot of good conversations. That's my best friend. We talk about a lot of deep stuff together. Now, saints, I name my seed that, and that's what, what you name your seed gonna happen. What you name your seed gonna happen. It's going to happen. You got to be careful what you name it. And I hope you can handle it. Because <laughs> sometimes people are like, oh, I named my seed to go all the way over to Guatemala, all the way over to India. And then you on that flight to Guatemala and you're all lightheaded. You up there nauseous, your stomach hurt, your back hurt. You up there on the flight talking about, oh, my back is hurting. Oh, my back is hurting. You complaining. You standing up in the flight. They telling you to sit down, ma'am. You trying to argue with the flight attendant because you talking about your legs hurt. You got a cramp because you ain't drink enough water. Huh? Some of you young folks on here, you better drink a lot of water in this heat. Y'all cramping up and stuff like that. That ain't cute. You're there walking in your heels and then you got to take a little break because you saints. you ever seen that person who walking in heels and then then they they they, they twist their ankle <laughs> and they try to play it off. You probably the one that I'm talking about. They twist their ankle and they try to play it off like they ain't just twist their ankle. Now nah, we saw that. We saw that you just got knocked off of balance. Now we need to find out what happened to you. Was there an angel push you? Was it a demon push you? Who pushed you? Who pushed it? Saints, some of y'all, some of y'all don't believe, but but even your body, your body need your exercise. I'm gonna get back to the subject. Your body, <laughs> your body need exercising because your blood flow need to work. Do you know? Say if you don't move your fingers throughout the day, like, I mean, that's potential uh, hazard. I don't want to call nothing on you, but it's potential hazard. Say you don't move your shoulders in the day. That's potential hazard. You got to move your body around your body like a car and that blood need to flow all over your body. So move your back, stretch yourself. Um, um, you got you got to do some workouts. You see what I'm saying? And you got to drink a lot of water and just move your body around. You ain't got to do no uh, exercise that give you headaches. Uh, there's some of you are on here that some exercises give you headaches. Just switch it up. Your body can't take it. Or your, um, as a matter of fact, uh, sometimes your body has to get used to working out. Did you know that when you start working out, your body could start having aches and headaches and stuff like that because your body is having an overload. It's like, hey, you never did this to me before. You taking me somewhere I don't want to go. Since I had a joke the other day, but um, fat folks don't like to brush their teeth. I don't, I don't want to be too, uh, uh. <laughs> I see we got Snoop Dogg spirit on the line, but, uh, 
uh, fat folks don't like to brush their teeth. And let me tell you how fat folks don't like to brush their teeth. Because when you, when you brush your teeth, it switch your appetite flow. Because when you, when you, um, <laughs> when you are brushing your teeth, it does something to the foods. You notice that, right? Your foods do not have the same taste buds to it. You can't drink orange juice when you brush your teeth. You can't do something. So fat folks don't like to brush your teeth. Because if you brush your teeth, as, <laughs> as soon as you brush your teeth, it changes your appetite. Now, when you don't brush your teeth, it's like a free for all. Like you won't eat everything because there's a taste that you're looking for. But when you brush your teeth, it's like you put a, a pacifier on your eating. It's true. So saints, if you go to anybody that's 400 pounds, 500 pounds, just look at their teeth. I bet it's not white. Because that person was, a, <laughs> that person was appeasing all of their activity in the taste buds, in the food and the taste. You know that, right? So when you see them, their, their teeth ain't going to be white. I have never met a 400 pound person that their teeth was white. Because when you brush your teeth, it reset your appetite. Some of y'all don't know this. It do. Um, Saints, watch this here. If you somebody that like to snack a lot at night and that's, that's what make you gain the most pounds that you don't want to gain, brush your teeth at night and, and, and say, okay, I'm finished here. I'm going brush my teeth. Now, watch this here. If you do that, you'll find that you're not adding on to those pounds that you don't want to add on to. Now, saints, I got to be careful with that type of doctrine because some of y'all need to be thick. It's beneficial to your future. That's all we're going to talk about. Some of y'all need to be thick. Yeah, that thickness will will, will bring you um, some 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 some. Let me get back to this text here. Genesis chapter eight verse twenty two. Some of y'all. It says, "While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease." Now, saints, let's deal with this. Is it nighttime where you are? Is it coming into nighttime? Is it going to be daytime soon? Is it going to be nighttime soon? If you could look at day and night, that's evidence that your seed will produce a harvest. One time I was sowing, I was sowing for an issue with my hair one time. One time I was sowing for an issue with my hair and my hair, my hair, uh, my hair, I got a hair harvest. I'm talking about the hair on my head. Um, I got a hair harvest. I was sowing for my hair to grow and my hair grew. I was sowing for, for issues concerning a financial transaction that went left and the financial transaction was handled. The harvest always comes on what you name the seed. I named my seed Dr. Mike Murdoch. Now, Dr. Mike Murdoch is over and with my life. Think about this. He's my, he's my best friend. But I named my seed that. Think about that. I named my seed that. I named my seed that. I named my seed that. Now, saints, I also want to say this to you. The same place where Dr. Mike Murdoch does his books, I now am doing my books through that same place. Think about that. I named my seed Dr. Mike Murdoch years ago. Now, I have Dr. Mike Murdoch's anointing on me. I have Dr. Mike Murdoch's anointing flowing through my ministry. There's people getting territories off of my anointing, the territorial anointing. There's people getting buildings in my ministry, houses in my ministry. There's people that have built a house from the ground up in my ministry just off of my anointing, sowing into me. There's people that own businesses and own different type of territories just because of that connectivity. Think about it. The territorial anointing that was on him. I respected it. Now it's flowing through me. There's people getting miracles at their jobs, getting thousands of dollars. Saints, did you know somebody just wrote me the other day? Somebody wrote me the other day and guess what? They got $2 million. 
They wrote me. They, and they wrote me their bank statement. They got $2 million from an exchange. $2 million. $2 million. Two. Two million dollars in my ministry. Wrote me. Wrote me. Wrote me. And showed me the screenshot. Showed me the evidence. That two million dollars. Saints, think about that. There's a power in Prophet Joshua Holmes. I live this. I walk in this. There's a glory realm. Glory. There's a glory. There's a glory that I walk in. There's a glory that I live in. There's a glory that I activate every single day I sow. Even though I'm a leader, I walk in this. I live in this. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. You don't know what's going to happen. You often hear me say, I pray for every thousand dollar sow in my ministry that you're walking multimillionaire status. It's happening. It's possible because I want you to catch this. When you're sowing in the thousand dollar level, there is a stewardship that you walk in. There's a trustworthiness that you walk in with money. And God could trust you with money. God could see you giving big to his kingdom because you are already are sowing thousands. You saints, there's something that happened when you sow a thousand. You break open your spirit, your soul, to flow in God's anointing where He could use you to give. There's power when you sow a thousand, because everybody is like a sowing virgin. And when somebody sows a thousand dollar seed, when they sow in the thousand dollars, whether it be three thousand, two thousand, four thousand, seven thousand, eight thousand, that's why I told you in my story, the Lord gave me seven thousand dollars and I sold it years ago, and that he gave me another $7,000. When God sees that you are in the thousand flow, there's no, there's no, you cannot really clarify what level of money God going to trust you with because he may take you to millions ASAP. And that's powerful. You can't say, okay, I'm sowing in the thousands, so I'm gonna reap in the thousands. No, you may reap in the millions. 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 If you sow in the thousands, you may reap in the billions because God sees that you're broken open into sowing. That thousand dollar seed broke open my life. It had broken over many people's life. It's gonna break open your life. Everybody should dream about sowing a thousand dollar seed. You should dream about sowing a thousand dollar seed because a thousand dollar seed, it brings restoration and justice to your life. The thousand dollar seed, it takes somebody out of poverty and lack and financial problems. It's the thousand dollar seed that brings generosity, that brings investors, that brings people that care for you, that brings people that have an anointing to show you love and show you respect and show you honor and show you assistance. The thousand dollar seed is a hit seed in the spirit. It was Solomon that used that thousand number in his sowing, but he sowed a thousand different times. The thousand dollar seed, it breaks open your life, breaks open your life in prosperity angels. Prosperity angels, they know every thousand dollar sower. Money angels, they know every sower that sows a thousand dollars. They know you and they mark you. And God is always in talks with prosperity angels and money angels to bring multiplication to your life. To bring Multiplication to your life. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 9. Let's go here to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Let's go to verse 10. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown. And multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. He multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. 
He multiplies your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. He multiplies your seed sown, not your seed dreamed, not your seed talked about, not your seed hoped for, but your seed sown. That means that I take the seed and then I sow it. Think about this. I take the seed and I sow it. God said that he multiplied the seed sown and he increased the fruits of your righteousness. Now, saints, look at this here. There's anointing flowing on this line because now you're getting a recognition of how the seed works. It doesn't work for God to take something for you and create a long life of hardship. It's God taking your honor and now using that honor as a portal for you to access everything else, for you to have access to everything else that will bring you joy, that will bring you peace, that will bring you pleasure, that will bring you happiness. Job 36, 11 said that you'll spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasures. Now, this is what multiplying of the seed does. When your seed is multiplied, it's multiplied into what you named it. It's also multiplied in what you desire. It's also multiplied in what you want. It's also multiplied in what you dream about. Now, I also want to magnify this. It says it increases the fruits of your righteousness. Now, saints, in James chapter three, uh, it says that the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those that make peace. In uh, James chapter three, it says the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those that make peace. You notice in James chapter three, it says that it's sown in peace, the fruit of righteousness. Now, so... That means that you can't operate in producing righteousness without sowing. You got to go. You can't pray your way into righteousness in productivity, in your fruitfulness. The only way you can operate in righteousness is you have to tap into the, the gateway of sowing, not praying, not wishing, not hoping, but you got to use sowing. You notice that sowing is the channel, is the birth canal of producing all of these elements of God. From righteousness, you got to go through sowing. Honor, you got to go through sowing. Salvation went through sowing. Deliverance goes through sowing. Praise, thanksgiving, go through sowing. Everything goes through sowing. Everything goes through sowing. Now look at this here. It says that he'll multiply your seed sowing and increase the fruits of your righteousness. You know what that means? That when you're sowing, God will increase your account in heaven, that you have done godly deeds, that you have followed the voice of God. When you're sowing, God pits that on your account even into eternity. This is so powerful. Your seed sowing account will be matched and rewarded even in your future life when you leave your body. God is still going to be blessing you for every seed that you're sowing today. Look where it said, he multiply your seed. So if you're on this line, say, Father, I receive a sowing anointing. Father, I receive a reaping anointing. Seligo. Glemans de Bilagia, Talasianzo, Grenzo Bolivian. I received the sowing anointing. I received the reaping anointing. I received the power of God. And all of my seeds are multiplying. All of my harvests are loosed in my life. Money, you are loosed in my life. Wealth, you are loosed in my life. Prosperity angels, I decree and I declare that you are ministering for me. You're working with me as I obey God. You're working with me as I honor God. You're working with me as I am worshiping like Abraham worshiped. He took his best seed and he sold it. There's somebody watching me right now. As a matter of fact, there's three people watching me right now. The Holy Ghost been dealing with your heart as you've been listening with me. And he been dealing with your heart to sow a thousand into this ministry. There's three of you that I need you to write me at my 
Email Prophet Joshua Holmes at AOL.com after you sow that seed of $1,000. I need you to write me after you sow that seed of $1,000 into this ministry. The Lord is dealing with you as you're watching me. The anointing been stirring you. And yes, it's the Holy Ghost. He having me confirm to you verbally, audibly. You're going to sow that $1,000 seed into this ministry. And you're going to write me at Prophet Joshua Holmes at AOL.com. I want you to name the seed three things that you want God to do. Or you can write me in my email and tell me the, the three things that you want God to do. Three things that you want God to do while the anointing is flowing. While you're stepping out, I want you to name that seed three, thing, three things. There's many people in my ministry, they start off sowing small. They start off sowing small. They worked their way up and miracle power overtook their life. They started moving in the grace and the glory for increase, for business transactions, for wealth transferences, for health in their bodies. One of the sores in my ministry had a massive miracle earlier this year, was sick in their body. And they were sowing thousand dollar seeds into me. And do you know that the pain in their body in January, February, it was removed. And they're making a lot of money. They don't walk in a financial anointing and they're experiencing these money angels, these prosperity angels. They're actually on this line. Miracles are happening to them. Amy, Amy, she's on the line. And saints, I want you to catch this. When you release seeds of sacrifice, you step into the world of God where he takes care of you. You step into the world of God where he meets your petition and he ministers and serves you. There's three of you on here that are supposed to step out and sow that $1,000 seed into Prophet Joshua Holmes into this ministry. We have three ways to give. The mailing address, P.O. Box 797-901, Dallas, Texas, 75379. We have Cash App, dollar sign, Prophet Joshua Holmes. And we have PayPal, Prophet Holmes at AOL.com. I want you to look on this page on Facebook, Prophet Joshua Holmes. Look on the page, on the cover page, and you'll find all the details in red. You're going to sow that $1,000 seed. And within 21 days, you're going to see these money angels and prosperity angels creating ideas, creating doors, creating relationships in your life that catapult you to the next levels of finances. You're going to experience the Lord placing a money mantle on you. There's going to be a grace to study wealth in the Bible from another angle. There's going to be a grace to pray in tongues. There's going to be a grace to comprehend how to make decisions without any double-mindedness, confusion, or procrastination, inconsistency. You're going to see the ability to solve problems intensifying your life. You're going to have ideas from God of how to make money. God is going to speak to you and talk to you in finances. I release the anointing on you right now. Father, as you have given it to me, great God Jehovah, I release the financial anointing of the great God Jehovah on your life in the name of Jesus. I pray for all my partners on here. Every one of you are that so into my ministry. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I command harvests into your life. I release the prophet's reward into your life. I release money cometh into your life. And I lose money wells. I lose money favor. I lose money increase. I lose money to flow into your life. Money angels, prosperity angels, minister of finances. As you move with me and minister for me, I now assigned you to minister to my partners on this line. 
ka levele kluvian le sono ongle misa beligio no clevese crovazian ka le nisianso le pele ve kiva la grazi a crono o stolo ni kali a zono o kvai vana kranzi i cronovian bi lazane kronzula a le kuzi i crovazia le pele felesian se bilian do lucruvian tri sa la granze pele sono o clevais there's three of you going to sow that thousand dollar seed. There's three of you going to sow that thousand dollar seed. Don't miss it. I want you to write your name at prophetjoshuaholmes at AOL.com. Let me know who you are. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Ma, grab,